I'm Tom O'Kane from Kaitan CSA. I'm making this video as one of our resources for our online training program, Grow Your Own CSA. And in it, I'm going to interview a group of other projects from across the UK. And the question we're looking at in this session is, what's your top tips? What are your top tips for setting up a CSA? So I'll start off and then I'll hand over to them. So. I would say, I'd say go for it. And at the same time, I would say, be aware of what you're stepping into. You know, it's like you're taking on a big responsibility. So get skilled up, have the growing skills in place, have the money management skills in place and the business management skills in place, people management skills in place. It doesn't have to be one person who has all those skills. You can, bring all of those skills together with a group, a core group of people working together. And on that, I would say when you're choosing that core group, when you're choosing the right people, choose people who you share, you have something in common with. You, you don't want to choose people with very strong opposing ideas within a group because it's potentially going to pull the group apart. But choose motivated people who are clear on their objectives and really want to support a project like this to happen. Work with them to create a business plan, a really clear plan of steps of how you're going to get where you're going. And I'd also say, ask lots of questions. Go and visit other CSAs, um, work with the CSA, have a training with the CSA over a season, over a year, whatever. You know, it's all it's all happening. All the answers are out there. Hopefully a lot of the answers will come through in this training program that we're setting up. But there's so much experience out there. Um, people who have made mistakes and actually would be able to tell you how to avoid making those mistakes. So I'd say ask lots of questions on the growing side of it, the financial side of it, the membership management side of it. Just um, engage with other projects and ask questions. And I think so long as you build the competent skills, you have a good plan, there's no reason why your CSA is not going to work. You know, there's a good market out there. Produce grows really well in the UK on the right soils, on reasonable soils. It doesn't have to be great soils. Um, so I'm confident that CSA can flourish. It's just a matter of good planning, the right skills, the right group of people. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pass you on to listen to the interviews with the other projects. And I wish you luck with setting up and running your CSAs. And I hope you enjoy and get some good information out of this video. Thank you for watching. Definitely go and speak to people that have already done it. Like learn from people that have set one up and are up and running. Like that was massively valuable for me. Um, and just give it a go, basically. Like I do feel often that I'm winging it, and I don't know what's <laughs> like. You know, I I'm not I'm not. We're only in our second year, so I don't have a huge amount of experience, but. I just feel like sometimes you just got to get the ball rolling and get started and then it will just kind of progress how it will. Um, and I think that's the most scariest bit is just getting started. Um, I do remember being quite terrified this time last year. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, talk to other growers and other people that have done it and then just go for it. My tips for anyone starting would be to start start small, try and do something that you think you can achieve and, and do it well. You know, it, it always feels better to, to really nail something than, you know, struggle um, to do something and feel like you haven't achieved what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. um, that said, you know, I, th I think you have to be ambitious at the same time. You know, you've got to kind of believe that you can do it and and really go for it. I mean, I 
I definitely find this time of year pretty nerve wracking at the start of the season when mm. there's so much potential and everything, you know, it's easy to germinate all these seeds, but there's, there's like so much that can go wrong and, you know, we're growing as a, as a box team. So there is always a bit of intrepidation of like, is it going to go well? Um, but yeah, you've just got to have a go. Starting out, I think it is good to try lots of different, you know, vegetables and different varieties. And then I would advise quite quickly deciding on which ones are working out and, you know, not uh, worrying about dropping certain things. So, yeah, don't be scared to choose the things that you're good at and you can always kind of grow from there. You know, have a go, do what you can with the resources that are available and try and make sure that you're produce is as high quality as you can as you can manage it you know uh, it's really important with the csa to um be open to all members of the community you want to um yeah pull, pull your membership from as wide a, a base of the local community as possible really so it's important to avoid overt political statements. Yes, maybe the majority of your members will have one particular political affiliation, but that's not to say that people with a different political affiliation won't. Um, and accept that people want to engage in a local farm for lots of different, very valid reasons. So there might be young families who want their children to see where their food comes from. There might be older retired people who um, have a bit more time and want somewhere to volunteer as well as getting their food from it, that place. There might be environmentally aware people for whom the local or organic aspect of your farm is the most important um, and many more. <laughs> um, it's important to be clear how much income you need to both pay people fairly and to run a financially sustainable sustainable business that will cover its costs. So at Canal Side, we've been really careful about that and our day-to-day -day running, we're fully self-sustaining. We haven't relied on grants or anything like that for the main operating costs and the establishment costs. Um, so that means you need a clear business plan that focuses on what you want to achieve um, with some realistic goals for your business and set a fair share or box price. So don't undersell yourself. Um, make sure your, your price is fair and bear in mind that you're selling a story, not just vegetables. Um, and yeah, like I said just now, only take grants to cover capital investment costs. So not for day-to-day -day running costs. Um, if you take loans, um, it's good if that can be from uh, prospective members of the community, but you have to be really clear about the risks that are inherent in starting up a business with those people who might be lending. And try and keep it as simple as possible for the first three seasons. So limit choice, have simple friendly events and keep other things as simple as you can. I mean, there's there's a couple of little um, sort of going. Um, I'm just sort of in in details, but I would say I mean, one thing I would say don't don't make what you're offering overly complicated too early, like try and keep it simple. You know, like if you're offering veg shares, you know, maybe offer a small and a large size or whatever, or three sizes. But I would, I mean, everywhere I've been involved, we've steered away from offering tailored shares, like, you know, without potatoes, or, you know, go, sort of go for it, go for it go for it from the get-go like you know that you've got you've got nothing to lose and the the kind of the quick you, you know you'll learn the more you go for it I think the more you'll learn really and the, the quicker you'll probably get to where you hope hope to be so um yeah I I do also feel about CSAs that growers you know probably should have a 
you know, a, a, a certain amount of experience under their belt before, because it feels like a particular offering. You're, you're really, you're asking people to buy into to your farm and buy into the risks and rewards of it. Like you, you know, buy into the potential of a failed crop or like terrible weather and the consequences of that. And so I think, you know, I think that's, I think that's really, that's really wonderful. And like you can, people can really feel involved and love that. But I think you shouldn't, I think you shouldn't really ask people to buy into, um, you know, your, your potential incompetencies as a complete new entrant grower. Do it. That's my top tip. Um, when we started out, we had two public meetings. At the second public meeting, a steering group was set up and it was decided to get going. So we were very fortunate we had the land. So the, the top tip is, te is get going, but the very top tip is make sure you've got some land. But once you've got the land to grow on, get going. There was a CSA group some years ago in the southwest of England that never got going because they spent nearly two years arguing about what structure they were going to have. I think they grew some potatoes and that was it. We got going. We didn't say, are we going to be a CIC or whatever? We just got going. So we had the second public meeting in January. The first was in November. And in February, we planted some broad beans. A group of us got together on a Sunday because none of us were paid. None of us had any money. We got together on a Sunday on the land that had been allocated to us and we put some broad beans in. And after that, we held volunteer growing sessions every weekend up until June when we were able to produce the first of the shares for 15 people. Most of the 15 people were the people who'd been volunteering, obviously. And we just went on from there. And gradually in that first year, we started thinking about structure. We set up a bank account and all that kind of thing. But um, my top tip would be don't hang around. Get the land and just get going. Top tips. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, be really clear about what your aims and objectives are and how you want to like run you know, run your project because there's so many different ways that you can run the CSA. Um, if you haven't got the growing experience, I think it would be very, very stressful going quite big quite quickly. So I would always just say, especially for people who are on the kind of growing side of things, get as much experience working for other people or seeing other people's CSAs or large scale kind of wholesale farms to sort of small scale um, farms, just trying to kind of get as much sort of the growing kind of experience it depends how you learn like I'm a very sort of kind of visual and I like to learn as I go and and that was my way into kind of farming so I say that's that's really important um and then yeah um and I think realizing that actually yeah there's there's a lot of resources out there um which could be really really helpful but just chatting to as many people too as possible is is really is really good um, maybe don't do what we did, which was just trying to do everything ourselves. Recognise that delegation has to happen at some point in your business um, and that that's actually a really good thing, you know, like welcoming people into your farm space can be really beneficial. And, you know, if you're starting up, it's OK. You know, sometimes I think there's an interesting discussion that's been happening about, you know, valuing the work of the veg growing and running a CSA um and versus volunteer sort of like labor and support and I guess that kind of comes down to again about like what aims and objectives are but you know if you're starting up from you know you're starting up and you're going to want to run long term I think it's okay to kind of compromise on those morals sometimes and and include like volunteers and realize that actually yeah there are loads of people out there who have the skills that you don't necessarily have and that you know you also need to value the skills of admin and accounting and um, machinery you know maintenance as well as you know um, as well as like the veg growing so yeah I, I would sort of yeah say be cautious to, to anyone thinking that they have to do everything themselves I don't I think that's kind of rugged individualism it's a bit of a recipe for burnout um, so yeah radical delegation skills and radical delegation <laughs> I'd recommend great